predominantly black, the representation is abysmal amongst the positions of leadership. The regular season ended with seven black coaches out of 30. But with head coaching openings in 2021, there was an opportunity for change and progress appears to be underway because seven of those hires have gone to black head coaches with the lone exception being Rick Carlisle returning to his old stomping grounds in Indiana. Nate McMillan had the interim tag removed after taking over midseason and Willie Green is expected to take over the Pelicans gig following the NBA finals. Stephen A, I'll start with you. What is the significance of seven black coaches being hired? Well, I think it's incredibly significant. Obviously, um, <clears throat> I don't know of anybody that has pushed this narrative more than me as it pertains to uh, African-Americans needing the opportunities to be head coaches in the National Basketball Association. Uh, obviously, there's more desperate need when it comes to the National Football Leagues, especially college football, which is an absolute joke. Uh, the list goes on and on. But as it pertains to the National Basketball Association, a league that's over 75 percent black, you would think that the paucity of opportunities that were being accorded to these guys uh, would have would have hit the radar for folks as, uh, but long before I had to get on the air and literally go to hell off about it. What I'm I'm touched by and what I love about all of this right now is that none of these are bad job opportunities. Historically, a lot of times when we find African Americans getting some of these positions, is for a franchise that's on a path to nowhere. Uh, they're moribund, they're pathetic, and, and, and these guys are asked to come in and inherit these jobs and, you know, build some kind of foundation. And then when it's time to springboard from there, they're nowhere to be found because they're let go uh, by folks. Um, and as a result, it is what it is. That's not the case here. We saw the job that Nate McMillan did. They could have easily went the route of a white individual when Lloyd Pierce got let go. But they elevated Nate McMillan and look at the job that he did in getting Atlanta to the conference finals. Uh, we see a Yudoka who's paid his dues and has been around for a long time getting the Boston job with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. That is not a shabby job. Jason Kidd getting the job in Dallas. That's not a shabby job. Chauncey Billups with or without Damian Lillard. That is not a shabby job. Wes Unsell Jr. You know something? Your dad won a championship with this franchise and was an NBA Finals MVP um, in 78 to 79, I believe. We all know the greatness of Wes Unsell. This is his son who was an assistant there, worked there for years, and has toiled the terrain of uh, you know being on the sidelines for an NBA franchise. And here he is now taking over a Wizards franchise with Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal as backcourt mates in the Eastern Conference. That is not a shabby job. Willie Green with Zion Williamson. That is not a shabby job. And so I look at it from that perspective and I'm saying it's not just the fact that they got jobs. They have an opportunity to make something of themselves based on the franchise they've inherited as a head coach. This is what I would qualify as a legitimate coaching opportunity, a legitimate opportunity to show who you are, what you bring to the table and what you're worth. And I think the NBA as a whole should be applauded uh, for, for, for really stepping up and making sure that something like this happened. I think it's a beautiful thing. I think it's a beautiful day. And I think that we should all be incredibly proud of the opportunities that these guys have. Now it's up to them to make the most of it. And whatever happens, happens. Uh, but at least they got a legitimate bona fide opportunity as opposed to a joke of an opportunity where we see the end before they even arrived. That's not the case here with these jobs. And I'm very, very happy for all of the people that got them. Uh, justice postponed is justice denied. So this idea, I think, well, it's about time and eventually things naturally work themselves out, right? That doesn't, this doesn't happen just because people have finally become enlightened without a lot of struggle, without a lot of people shining a light on it, on the fact that what do you, percentage of African-American players in the NBA versus the percentage of people in leadership positions, front office, coach, it's out of whack. People, anyone noticing that? And Stephen A., you should not have to say it about yourself, so let me give you your flowers on this, okay? No one has been more vocal about it, nor has had a bigger platform, and you have frequently turned conversations on this show and debates on this show that are tangentially related to this issue or, or not directly about you. You have refocused the conversation consistently, gratuitously, 
to discuss the lack of, or paucity as you would put it, of African-American coaches in the NBA. Um, and others have also been vocal about it, including not just in the media, but some players, fans, culturally, people are more aware. And as a result, or, or let me put it another way, take all that effort away. Do you think seven of eight hires would be African-American coaches? Be honest. No. Why hasn't it been in, in the past? Hasn't been in the past. Maybe if there were eight jobs and you got two African-American hires, you go, oh, look at that. They hired a couple of black guys, right? Well, there were eight jobs, but at least two were African-American. No, seven of eight. That does not happen by accident. It does not happen just merely out of some enlightened position that someone woke up one day or the goodness of their heart. They realized, wait a minute, something's wrong here. It happens from constant pressure from people, foremost among them, Stephen A., I think you, in the media, and, and so I'd like to say that about you now in light of this today so you don't have to say it about yourself. Well, I appreciate it, um, but I'm not going to stop because <clears throat> I got to tell you, you know, listen, every coach, in the, if 50 percent of the coaches in the NBA don't have to be black. You know, just because the league is 75 percent black doesn't mean that 75 percent of the coaches should be black. And I understand that. And there are a lot of white individuals who do outstanding jobs. Uh, but the reality of the situation is that, you know, the litmus test for success and what have you isn't consistent. A lot of times when you look at African-American coaches, which brings me uh, to my next thing. And that's all, uh, you know, blacks in front office positions, because when I look at the whole analytics movement and what have you, I'm going to tell you what I believe about that. And I understand that you're a fan of analytics to some degree. And Max, believe it or not, so am I. Numbers has its place. It shouldn't be the be all end all. It shouldn't replace the eye test. It shouldn't replace what some of the nuances that come with evaluating what an organization is, what it should look like, and what players playing under those regimes, uh, how they perform, et cetera, et cetera. But what I will say is this. When you have analytics, what transpires, this is how I view analytics, Max. It's about numbers. And a lot of times you have owners that don't necessarily know nor understand the game to the degree that you would like. But they damn sure know numbers. And so as a result, if you're an analytics dude and you could come to an owner with a length speaking a language that they understand, they're more receptive to you. They embrace you a bit more. And as a result, you get the job and then you hire people under you as scouts, as player personnel directors, et cetera, et cetera, as GMs. The list goes on and on hovering, you know, or as you're hovering over them, they're directly under you as subordinates and blacks have been squeezed out of that as well. And so for me, what I look at it, and I'm not talking about just coaches, mm -hmm. coaches was one element, but I also think that, you know what, when you're an executive, you're the leader of a franchise, you're also the leader of men. And there are African-Americans that can do that too. And by the way, I don't want to stop there, Ma uh, Molly. Uh, there are women coaching in the NBA. They should be considered for head coaching jobs as well. Absolutely. They should be considered for front office positions as well. It shouldn't just be dominated by white males. There are even African-American women who know analytics. That's right. Right. Well, your police didn't uh, fall on deaf ears, Stephen A., because there's now 13 black head coaches in the NBA. We will leave it there with Giannis transcending to legendary status before our very eyes. We're wondering what Chris Paul is doing to his legacy. What's wrong with CP3 and can he right the ship? Stay tuned, it's first take.